So we're going to go over everything that happened in the last week, and there's a lot of stuff, so stay tuned. First thing I did was delete 5,000 of my eBay listings. So let's talk about what happened, because that's a pretty huge change. So I deleted 5,000 listings. They were all uninventoried sports cards listings with potentially bad photos, uh, potentially and probably the wrong price. And I said, I just need to get these out of here and relisted because it's clogging up my process. So deleted them all. I've probably taken photos of about 600 more of those since they've been deleted, uh, probably priced and listed about 120 of them. I've got a lot of work to do tonight with the rest of those. Uh, and I had about a 30% drop in impressions across my store. So about 5 million impressions just gone out the window. And not good, right? And you're thinking, oh man, did you lose that much revenue? No, I didn't, luckily. Revenue is down by about 2%, which probably is just I'm listing less because I'm doing other kinds of things this week. So I should probably list a little bit more. Uh, CTR is up marginally, less than a tenth of a percent. And page views are down 10%. So listings are, are impressions are down about a third. Page views are down about one tenth. So a lot of those listings were not even showing up or were not even being viewed when they showed up in the impressions. A lot of them far more than my you know regular type of listings. So just seeing that totally confirmed to me that yes, deleting uninventoried inventory is what's best for my business. So what I'm doing next time, maybe this weekend, maybe on Monday, I don't really know, but in the near future, is all of my uninventoried inventory in the warehouse gets deleted. That maybe the prices are wrong, maybe the photos are wrong, but mostly why I'm doing this is because when I go to get new inventory and I see a shelf full of things, I don't know what's inventoried and what's not inventoried. I don't know what's listed and what's not listed, and it takes so much time and it's such a waste of time to go back to my laptop or pull up my phone and go to active listings and type that in. Probably thinking, oh, it only takes only takes five minutes or 10 minutes. Well, okay, five minutes times 25 things is like two hours, okay? So it adds up very fast. So I'm just gonna delete it all, redo it the right way. Uh, that's gonna clear up space in the warehouse. It's gonna allow me to have everything inventoried because only once everything is inventoried can I safely move out of there. I'm kind of stuck, which is not good, but that's the way it is. I'm stuck until I get everything inventoried because if I just move piles of stuff, it's gonna get mixed up. I don't have to go into detail about that. Um, I, it's going to be okay. You know, I'm not buying any more inventory. I have been buying inventory for the, like the past six months now, or, you know, December, 2023, however long ago that was five months. Um, maybe in like two or three months, I will be purchasing some more video games to sell on Q4. But until then, basically the doors are closed, you know, no <laughs> to inventory buying. I'm still selling stuff. I'm still listing stuff, but nothing new, uh, because it's just not. That's not in a line with my, my current goals. What are my current goals? That's a good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, it's to really just like open myself up to you guys. Be more genuine. Be more authentic on YouTube. Uh, because a lot of you know this. I'm not just someone who resells stuff. Before that, I had a candy and, and jerky subscription box company. Before that, I did contract and, uh, and had agency marketing work done for people. I would do SEO work. I would do... Um, brand work, all that kind of fun stuff. Before that, I had a corporate job doing rebranding. Before that, I had a merchandising company um, where I would sell stickers and pencils and vinyl stuff to bookstores and gyms and ski resorts and places like that. Uh, before that, I published a book. So it's all kind of coming full circle because this week I published two books. Now, the quality of content of these two books is much lower than my first book, but I think it is what it sets out to be. I was listening to someone talk about video games, what makes a video game good or bad, or a song good or bad, or a work of art good or bad. What makes it good or bad, which are subjective terms, right? What makes it good or bad is, does it set out what it meant to accomplish? That book of horror writing prompts sets out what I intended it to accomplish. They're all unique. They're all good. I was reading through it, and I was like, oh, that one is kind of scary. It is kind of creepy, actually. And I <laughs> wrote it. You know, I was the one to establish the program the equation whatever you want to call it that spit these out now, it took me about three days to figure out how to do that from thought to finished product and it's actually even now a paperback book you can buy for 10 bucks and everyone who's downloaded it i didn't tell you guys to but i really do appreciate that support it's got about 15 downloads and i've made a little bit of money so far which is you know 
a good consequence of this kind of experimentation. Between making that first book, which took me three days, probably 12 hours total around there, I was able to make the second one in a morning, about three hours. It's 600 romance writing prompts. Uh, and just knowing what I know now, um, you can create prompts and lists and categories of information and organize it in a way that all you have to do is ask these AI bots one question, show them one input. And from that, you can create, you can get information that you then create more information with. Um, and it really is just like on autopilot using these, these AI tools uh, because they can't think, but they can produce. So if I can think for it, it can produce for me. And that's a very scalable relationship. To go back to the books, how much money do I think I'll make off these medium content books? Because I learned, thanks to you guys, there's low content, there's medium content, and there's high content. I think realistically, if I make 30 of these books, uh, which are there even 30 genres <laughs> of, of writing? I don't know. If I can create 30 of them, I think between a thousand and like three grand a year is not a ridiculous amount of money to assume I could make. Um, if one pops off and does really well, that could make 10 grand alone. Like, I really don't know, but I know the potential profit is easily in the thousands of dollars. And it's just a matter of having the stick to itness to scale this up um, with the brute force of AI, you know, more or less. So, what's the third thing that I'm really excited about? So, you guys know that I've done entrepreneurial stuff for years and years and years. You know that I like AI and I like this kind of sca uh, marketing scaling content and everything. But what I don't really have and what is difficult for me is the writing of language and tweaking of language, like program language, Python or, or you know, JavaScript or whatever there is. I don't really understand it that well. And I certainly have a difficult time creating it. So I talked to a friend of mine who does that on a daily basis. And he has the same ideas as me. I mean, di different ideas with the same, the same uh, desire to create products using this generative AI or products that revolve around AI. Um, you know, in my life, there's been the internet, there's been like web 2.0, like user generated content. There's been uh, blockchain technology like crypto and that kind of stuff, NFTs. Uh, and then there's this, like AI bots. And I think that this is this wave of technology is just ripe, you know, for harvesting. If there was ever a time to launch a business, now is the time to do that. I missed, you know, the internet being created. I missed the very beginning of social media and YouTube. I did not uh, really do anything with blockchain or crypto stuff, but now I think that I can position myself to hopefully do pretty well, or at least make some money, or at least learn something uh, with all this AI stuff. And he is someone who has tons of experience writing it. He's got other friends from uh, where he works and his, he works for a, a, a large corporation and has connections that way who are really good at implementing and deploying that kind of stuff. And I think where I fit into the equation is the content marketing and the kind of doing stuff like this, uh, you know, creating an audience where I can explain what we're doing and engage with you in that way um, and hopefully use my skills that I've, I've developed as a marketer over the past decade or so to let people know about the product because the best product in the world isn't worth anything if nobody knows about it. That's kind of the unfortunate reality of uh, dealing with people out there. So hopefully over the next few months or weeks or years, who knows how long it's going to take, you guys can stick with me through this process and I'll still be talking about my eBay business and resale and that kind of stuff. But you know, don't expect like a whole lot of garage sale or thrift store content from me or what sold videos. It's all going to be a lot more um, I don't know, bird's eye view, like top level stuff. I think I've fallen into the trap over the past, past few years of making the same kind of content over and over and over and over and over again. And some people like that, but it's definitely limiting in regards to keeping people who are curious on your channel uh, and, and getting a new audience. And so the good news is, is this is like, you know, as genuine and authentic as I can be because this is who I am. The bad news is, is you might not like it if you've been a long time viewer. If you do like it, you know, awesome. Thank you for sticking around. And by the way, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Uh, but if you don't like it again, I'm sorry, but you know, change is inevitable. And so expect more fun stuff like that over the forthcoming videos. Maybe I can even do a video every single day for the rest of the month. See you guys later.